So the Nike React Element 87 has been out since July and the hype has definitely gone up and down on this model. But I wanted to bring you guys a follow up video of after the hype and is it worth buying the React Element 87? Let's go ahead and discuss in this video. What is going on guys, Hass here at CollectiveKicks.com. If you guys want to shop this week's top sneaker deals, check the link in the description and happy shopping as well as if you guys want to buy a pair of these. Although they are selling out currently, uh, every time they release, you can buy them from eBay or StockX and again, I'll link those in the description as well. Um, so in this series, basically I just talk about the shoes after the release, months after the release, and I just kind of go over my thoughts on the shoes in general and where they sit after the hype has settled on the model. So this is the React Element 87. For some reason, I always wanna just call this one the Element React, but obviously it's not that way. You can see it says Nike React right here, and it features Nike React technology in the midsole, as it says on the bottom of the shoe. And yes, I washed my hands after the videos, because obviously these ones have been worn pretty heavily. But basically this is one of Nike's newer technologies in the midsole and the whole entire thing is made up of this React foam and it's extremely soft and it's basically Nike's answer to Boost in my opinion. So Adidas Boost has been running the show for like five years in a row and I've been saying Nike needs to come out with some new technologies to shine a little bit. I've been saying this for like two or three years and Lunarline needed a sequel and Nike React in a sense is that sequel to Lunarline. Lunarline was a really soft foam type material but unfortunately it was too soft for it to have direct contact. So Lunarlon was always encased in a harder foam. However, Nike React is really soft, but it's not as soft as Lunarlon, but the materials are made a little bit differently, so this can actually have direct contact to the pavement. And it does show a lot of wear and tear on some of the shoes, but really, the material is actually quite good and it actually lasts longer than expected. And if you saw my Epic React video, it's something that I mentioned in that video as well. Although it looks unappealing and it looks like it's destroyed, it actually maintains the cushioning quite well and it doesn't feel like it's gonna bottom out anytime soon. This Element React 87 though is an interesting model because it has obviously the clear upper and this material on here is so different that it is one that people are gonna love and hate as I mentioned many times in the past. Personally, I'm, I have a love-hate relationship with it myself because I really like the shoe, but this upper is so flimsy. Even though it's really breathable, it's just so flimsy and this is not, not like a soft material. So direct contact to your foot is not really dope. Also, you can't ever, ever wear these without socks. Like, And I personally like to wear a lot of my shoes without socks. Sometimes I'll just go to the grocery store with like my Epic Reacts or my Ultra Boost or to the park, something like that without socks. So this is not one of those shoes that you can do that. And it's a little bit more limiting be because of that. Um, if you're okay with that, then that's totally fine. But for somebody that wants an all around shoe that you can just wear, like you can't wear really without socks without looking terrible. I, I mean, I highly recommend you not wearing these without socks. Um, the other thing is the fit. Like the fit is true to size, I would say. Um, some people are saying that it can go down half a size. So if you are a size nine and a half, you can go to a size nine. I went the opposite direction because I didn't know and actually got a size 10. Uh, I bought them before they actually did the major release and because um, I bought them off of StockX early. So I got a size 10 because it was cheaper than the nine and a half and it was honestly the worst decision because these just fit way too big for my feet. I can wear really thick socks and it does make it a little bit better, but they're just definitely too big for my feet. And because of that, um, it probably adds to some of the issues that I've had with the shoe. Some of the things that I do like about the shoe though is the overall aesthetics of the shoe. I think it looks amazing. I think it looks really, really different. And a lot of people have said that this is like the shoe of the year for 2018. I personally beg to differ. I don't think it's that good of a shoe. It is really good, don't get me wrong, but it's just not like a sneaker of the year. Although I will say it's really nice and refreshing to have a nice new sneaker model that is like palatable and like looks cool, but also is extremely comfortable. And I think that that combination is great that Nike brought this to the table. I do like all of the different layers on the shoe. It really looks kind of cool. How you have kind of a hyperfuse material on the back with a seam. And then you have an overlay here for the laces. And then you have another little patch on the overlay here and here. Then you have some underlays as well here and then here, which the underlays are actually really nice because it gives a lot of different dimension to the shoe. On the downside of that, as you could see on the underlay, it is super dirty looking because this is such a breathable material that it just goes right through this and it actually uh, shows a lot of the dust right here. And actually I cleaned one of the shoes in the past and tried to clean it up and it, it does clean up a little bit after a while, but it's still like kind of ridiculous how dirty they look. Um, even though you haven't worn them that much. They just really pick up the dirt quite a bit. The cork insole is kind of a nice addition. I don't know why this matters, but it feels kind of nice. The best thing about this shoe again is the React midsole. It's lightweight. 
It's really, really cushioned well. It's responsive and it has a pretty good amount of traction on the bottom as well. So I think that it, overall the midsole is definitely where this thing shines. Uh, the upper is really, really flimsy as you could see. Like if you're looking for structure, if you're looking for a gym shoe as well as like a casual shoe, this isn't it. This is strictly a casual shoe. So I mean, I don't recommend this probably for anything else. One of the other things that I don't really love about the shoe is the tongue. Uh, because again, it just lacks so much structure. It folds over like this when you slide it on your foot. And then you end up with like a tongue that looks like this on your foot, which is kind of annoying. And then it kind of gaps down here. So you just have to slide it in perfectly and like, or realign the tongue. And so now that these have been out for a while though, the hype has definitely died down a little bit. And the more colorways we see drop, I definitely see the, the hype going down even more on the shoe, which is probably a good thing because it lets people get the shoes that have actually been wanting the shoes. I think that the colorways have been a little bit too crazy. We saw a lot of undercover collaborations that were pretty wild looking. And then we've seen a lot of mainstream colorways that are pretty wild as well, but they look very similar. Like some of them, you can't really tell the difference between the undercover or the regular versions. And I feel like they need to come up with a couple more plain and simple colorways, but maybe that's just me. Um, but yeah, some of them are just too similar and I don't really love that. The ones with the black react, I think look pretty cool. I think that they can do a lot with this model because there's so many different color elements to the shoe that they can add, pun intended. But I really think that this is a shoe that if they brought to Nike ID, they could really bring this shoe alive. The problem is the price point is 160. I mean, if they did a Nike ID for 180, that would be like ideal. Then you could do different colored pods. You could do different colored overlays and underlays. I think that would be just sick if they did that. So that is my recommendation to Nike. If they want to keep this product alive, release it on Nike ID and let us be creative. The packs that they're releasing, I think are just, again, going to slowly lose their steam, but I could be wrong. You guys leave a comment in the comment section. What do you guys think? The resale on these are definitely going down depending on which colorways you want. The first sale colorway is still selling for like $400 or so it looks like. And this one's selling for more than what I paid. I think I paid $250 for it uh, pre-sale and now they're selling for over three. Ultimately, I think this is a really cool shoe though. And definitely one that's really comfortable. Not really worth the extra hype of the resale, but since the prices are probably gonna be dropping down, it's definitely one that I think people are gonna be excited to actually give a try once they're able to actually get one of these in their collection if they haven't got one. Uh, thus far. I will say there is a nice alternative to the 87s though I mentioned in my comparison video already and that is the 55s. This is a knockdown version of the 87 with less premium materials for the upper but honestly I prefer this upper over the 87s just overall because it's more wearable it's more functional and you don't have to dress it up uh, with the socks and stuff that you're gonna always have to do when you wear these ones. Uh, I'm too lazy of a person. I don't really try to dress fancy for the most part. So it's white socks pretty much every day. And these ones don't look very good with white socks. So I have to definitely structure my outfit a little bit more and wear black socks at least or printed socks. And then these ones definitely pop. But on the positive side, it gives you a chance to flex a little bit and show off a little bit of different looks with just simply changing your socks, which is kind of a cool feature, I guess, if you will. You don't have that uh, with the 55s, but the 55s are also $30 cheaper and has the exact same sole and midsole as the 87s. So 55s are definitely a good purchase at 130 and a little bit more accessible uh, to be able to buy if you guys want uh, a pair of those ones. So I think it's nice that Nike has given us a couple different versions of the shoe. It'll be interesting to see what they do with this in the future. If they keep the bottom the same and then just change parts of the uppers for the next version or another element, I, I really don't know what they're going to do with it. But as for this clear look, I think it is something that is trendy for now, but it's going to be something that falls off. It's just, again, tedious and a little bit more effort goes into wearing these than probably what people are going to want to do. But what do you guys think about the React Element 87s though? What did I get right? What did I get wrong? Is it something that you guys have not tried yet? Or is it something that you've tried and you just didn't really understand the hype after you got them? I mean, again, comfortable shoes are comfortable shoes, and this is one of them. So I think that you can't really go wrong with this shoe. If you pay $400 resale and you get the wrong size or something like that, it might be more problematic to you. Or if you just don't like the structure of the shoe. I have a bit wider feet, and these actually fit pretty good for myself. I don't have a problem with them. Some people with extremely wide feet don't love this shoe uh, from what I've been told. So I guess it just depends on the people's feet. But leave a comment. Let me know. Have you tried them? Did you like them? Did you not? And what do you think after the hype? Do you think this is a shoe worth buying or not? I personally say yes, they're worth it after the hype, but not for the resale price. I would definitely wait for a retail pair. I definitely don't think the colorways are worth paying extra for. Unless you're trying to buy something with the exclusive look and feel, then maybe go for some of the undercover ones or the sale ones because those ones are the most sought after. Um, other than that, just get the ones you like the best and which ones like suit you and your wardrobe the best, I guess. But uh, definitely worth buying at 160, not really so much at 400 in my opinion, 
but that is just my opinion. Leave a comment in the comment section. What sneakers would you guys like me to discuss after the hype? Always curious to see what you guys say down there. If you guys hit me up on Twitter or Instagram as well, leave comments there. And I am looking for other shoes to be doing um, kind of like the after retrospective look on uh, for you guys' sake, and as well as just for myself. It's fun to be able to go back and look at some of these shoes after the dust has settled to see whether or not it was worth the hype or not. And I don't have to have the shoe in hand to be able to do this video. So anyways, thank you guys for watching. Subscribe if you guys are new to the channel. Notification bell if you want to be notified of when my videos go live. Thank you guys again for stopping by, and we'll catch you guys for some more videos very soon. Peace, guys.